Hey, this is Brad and Craig with Pro Like Gear, and today we're going to do a video talking about screamers, load limiters, rip stops, yep. and we'll talk about uh, advantages of Dyneema versus nylon screamers, and then we're going to take some test falls on these and see at what point they activate. So, Brad, why don't you take us through uh, the topic of screamers? All right, we have the DMM rip stop. This is a nylon screamer. We have the Kong reloadable screamer which is a really kind of unique thing I'll show you here in a second and then this is the Cassine Extra this is a Dyneema screamer with a little piece of rubber right here so you can actually turn this into a quick draw that doesn't really move much so you can just kind of keep it on your on your harness as a draw with a screamer so nylon versus Dyneema the Dyneema screamers are unique in the fact that they don't soak up water and don't change strength when wet so if you're on a really really wet climb you might want to think about a Dyneema Screamer. I have nylon and Dyneema with me usually whenever I go out. With the Dyneema Screamers, if you do happen to take a fall and these things fully activate, extend to their full amount, it does lengthen the moment of impact, but the second that these reach their apex of stretch, you get to shock load that anchor once again. So it does help, but in my opinion, it's not as good as a nylon Screamer because when these things fully activate and reach that full apex of how much these things finally tear, the nylon keeps stretching a little bit more than the Dyneema will, kind of elongating that moment of impact as well and creating a little bit of a, less of an impact. The Kong is kind of a unique one. Once these are done, they are done, one use only. The Kong, you can either use 9 mil or 11 mil cord. I'm gonna move up here a little bit so you can see it a little better. So you basically you run 9 mil or 11 mil through a different pattern shown for each one so you can kind of see how it's supposed to work through here and you can reload it and fall on it multiple multiple times all you need to do is change out your 9 mil or 11 mil cord when it starts looking a little worn so if you're kind of in the price range of you don't want to spend you know twenty dollars forty dollars ten dollars or twenty dollars for the nylon forty dollars for the Dyneema you can spend something like twenty dollars for one of these and use it over and over and over again the aluminum is much heavier than either of these screamers without the cord so this is definitely the heaviest option but kind of a unique little piece and now we're basically going to run uh, our crash test dummy Craig over here up the wall we have a screamer attached to a bolt hanger up above us there and we're going to have him simply just weight the screamer with his body weight and see if that gets it to rip and then we'll increment in you know a one foot fall two foot fall four foot fall until we get this uh, to fully activate. So I think we'll, uh, we'll start that now. All right, here we are getting ready to send uh, Craig up the wall. Most of these Dyneema and nylon ripstops activate about 2.5 kilonewtons. One kilonewton is roughly 225 pounds. So it's gonna take about 562 pounds of force to get this thing to activate and move, which shouldn't really be too much. Uh, Craig weighs an even 180 pounds, so he's kind of the perfect test piece for this uh, for this experiment. And yes, we are using a, di uh, a dynamic rope, so we are going to have a little bit of softening blow from the rope stretch, just so we don't hurt his back. And we'll uh, tie in here and get started. So you want me actually... Alright, so right there, perfect. <laughs> just, just right there. I got the helmet on. <laughs> Oh, that'd have been a great take too. It's oh, a good thing oh, we we got it. I'm recording. Oh, you did? Okay, awesome. Got to get B-roll, dude. All right, so now <clears throat> you want me just to lean back and wait this, right? Yeah, just to wait it. Just kind of, yeah, just kind of put your full body on that screen. Oh, jeez, I can see it working. Hey, okay, that's neat. Okay, just let go completely. All right, so basically right now Craig has his full body weight on it with a little bit of weight on his feet. I'm just gonna have him like kind of bounce up and down just a little bit and see what happens. So that screamer is not going anywhere; it's not activating at all. So if you want to grab that green hold in front of you and pull through about a foot of slack, we're gonna start off with a two-foot fall, basically. So you want me just to go ahead and take a fall now? Yep. Okay. Let go. I got you. Three, two, one. Nope. Alright, let's climb up there and try it again. 
the point, it sounded like it activated a little bit, like a couple switches, yeah. off, didn't it? Yeah. Is that just the wood? Uh, I don't know. Let's see here. I was just like this last time. What does it look like at the bottom? Uh, it did. It did actually fray a couple of them. Okay, so it did pop a couple stitches. It did stitches. pop a couple stitches. So on a, about a two foot fall with one foot of slack, it did activate the uh, the screamer slightly at the bottom. Um, I'm going to, let's pull through another, like, let's do two feet this time, a slack. And my instinct on this stuff is to just jump whenever you fall, so I'm going to try not to do that this time. Did you jump? Yeah, I, well, it's, you're supposed to when a lighter yeah. guy is being glazed, so sorry about that. All right, so that's about two foot. Yep, I've got a little curl here, so that's about two feet of slack. So okay. then we'll just, we'll drop and see what happens. Are you rolling, Shane? I'm locked off and ready. Rolling on the iPhone and rolling on the camera. Okay, three, two, one, jump. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it went though. Yeah, so yeah. Hey guys, what what did we just do? It was about a four foot fall from uh, about belt even with the anchor height, and that was enough to almost fully activate it the entire way. And so, you know, I'll, I'll say this, I could feel it, I, I could feel it releasing as I was going down. Really? Yeah, I mean, not dramatically, but I, I definitely could feel that it was happening. Very cool. So it, it, yeah, no, no shock to the back like a normal fall or anything. All right, well, you can really tell what this thing looked like when it activates. Uh, it activated a few stitches at the two foot fall. And then when Craig took the four foot fall, it pretty much activated all the way. And these things, if there's not a lot enough force on them, they won't activate the whole way open. So this still did a great job at slowing down his momentum, lengthening that, that moment of impact. And you can really see that <clears throat> this thing just tore itself apart and really slowed him down really nicely. Anything you want to say? No, I think that's about it. Thanks all for right. watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. This is what it looks like.